Hey, this is Lewis from Breakdance, and today I am proud to announce the release of Breakdance Beta Number 1. I want to give a huge thank you to all of our alpha testers for reporting bugs and testing out the alpha. Um, it was your work and your testing that allowed us to get Breakdance Beta 1 out so quickly, so thank you. And especially, I want to thank everybody who emailed our support desk with login details so we could investigate hosting compatibility problems. That is invaluable and uh, you all are the best. Okay, let's walk through the new features and fixes in Breakdance Beta 1. So we added a header builder element. Let's go into Breakdance and take a look at that. Um, first thing you'll notice though when you activate Breakdance Beta 1 is that it's gonna give you a warning. It's not fully backwards compatible and you have to regenerate your CSS cache. If you're not upgrading from the alpha, you just dismiss the notice. If you are upgrading, I'll give you some details on what isn't backwards compatible later in this video. You can just click regenerate your cache. Um, I'm just gonna dismiss the notice because I'm not upgrading. And let's go ahead and take a look at header builder. So we'll go to headers, add a header, we'll call this my header. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that we made it so headers have great conditions. You can now add a condition for where the header displays. This works for footers as well and you have everything you could want for controlling where headers and footers display on your site. But I'm just gonna leave this at everywhere, add the header, and let's edit in Breakdance. And the next thing you'll notice is we made Breakdance load much, much faster. Let's just uh, Command Shift R hard refresh the builder to see how quick it loads now. And there you go, that's not sped up, that's live, that's how long it takes to load Breakdance now. Um, okay, let's go to the add panel and add in a header builder. So header builder is like a section, but it has special functionality for building headers. Um, you can create uh, sticky headers, overlay headers, um, all your content lays out horizontal. You get a uh, little scroll preview on the page so you can scroll down. Let's go ahead and make a quick header here. I'll add an image. I'm just gonna choose a logo I already uploaded here. And then I'm going to add a menu builder. And as you can see, the, the uh, header builder is stacked horizontally. By default, let's go ahead and make this a sticky header. So we'll just enable sticky header. And now, as you can see, I am scrolling and the header sticks to the top of the page. Um, you can do some advanced stuff with the sticky header as well. For example, you could only keep it for the first 300 pixels. Once we get past 300 pixels, it will hide. Um, you could choose to slide out. You could choose to fade out. Um, you could reveal on scroll up. Um, all sorts of stuff you can do here. Um, you could have uh, a sticky header that's different than your main header. So let's duplicate this. Um, this is going to be my sticky header. Let's just delete these other menu links here. And uh, I'll give a different background color here for the sticky header. And then this will be my main header. So for this header, I'll choose sticky. Um, and I'll choose scroll behavior. Um, hide until scroll. Scroll um, 600 pixels. And then my main header, which is not sticky, will scroll out of view and we get to 600 pixels. Then my header will slide into view. Um, you can also do overlay headers. Just go to overlay, enable the overlay header, and there you go. You got all the uh, styling controls you could possibly want. Um, okay, next up, I wanna show the masker element. So let's go ahead and save this and then let's just go uh, to WordPress and go to pages, add new page. Let's call this element demos and edit and break dance. Look at that load time, that's nice. Okay, um, you can see the reason it's fast is because we actually defer the loading of the elements until after break dance is loaded. That's what that spinner was. Anyway, let's add a masker. A masker lets you apply image mask effects to literally anything, so I'll put a video in here. Then I'll go up to the masker. Um, for container, I will choose an 800 pixel width. And for mask, I will choose a stripes shape and then you have a mass video probably you'd want to make the video autoplay and upload your own video so you don't have the youtube title and play button but as you can imagine you can create some cool effects the next thing i want to show is the advanced tabs element so many builders have tabs elements we have an awesome tabs element with great design options but you can't control what goes in the tabs right you can only put text in the tabs that's a very common limitation of uh, typical visual builders with Breakdance, you can put anything you want in the tabs using advanced tabs. You have your tab content element. Your first tab link will open your first tab content. 
your second tab link will open your second tab content and so on. So as you can see, you can just drag anything you want into the tab content. I could put, you know, I could put anything. I could put rich text in here. I could put an image in here. I could do anything inside the tab content. Um, so that's a cool feature. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next new element, we added a simple counter element. So it's your typical number counter, scrolls up, animates on scroll. Uh, we added copy from front end. So I will demonstrate this on breakdance.com. Um, let's go to breakdance.com. And here's the way a site is going to be normally. And then if you want to enable copy from front end on your site, you would go to uh, breakdance, settings, advanced, and enable copy from front end. We're going to have a full-blown design library soon. But right now, if you want to create your own design sets for breakdance, you just want to enable copy from front end. Um, once that's, oh, I enable that breakdance.local. I got to enable that on breakdance.com. Let's, uh, let's go into the WordPress admin on breakdance.com and go to settings, advanced, copy from front end. And now if we refresh breakdance.com, you will see we can mouse over any section on the page and click the copy button. Let's go ahead and copy the hero section. We'll copy and then let's go into breakdance um, on our local install and we'll just hit command V to paste. And here we go. It didn't bring in our um, global color and it didn't bring in our um, background image because obviously you can't steal items out of other, your media library, but you get the idea. Um, speeds up your workflow a lot. We also have um, in builder copy and paste. So across sites, cross domain copy paste. So let's open uh, this page. And then let's go to um, this section, right click copy, or you can just hit command C. And then let's go to a different domain and command V and paste. And as you can see, it pastes. Um, so that's cool. That should speed up your workflow a bit. Um, we also made it easier to stack elements horizontally. So uh, a lot of posts in the Facebook group were people saying they built a column-based layout like this, and they wanted it to stack horizontally, um, even at phone portrait. Well, the default behavior of columns is to stack um, vertically at the first responsive breakpoint. Um, so what you do now, you go to layout, you go to stack vertically, and previously there was no never option. Now you can choose never, so it will never stack vertically. Um, any drop down, uh, stack vertically drop down, that is for an element that would stack vertically by default, now has a never option, so you can prevent it from stacking vertically. We also added uh, smooth scroll to hash link, CSS only. Big thanks to Bruno Bizarra for posting the code for that in the Facebook group. I had no idea you could do it with CSS only, so that's nice. You can also control sliders with a link. So let me give a quick demo of that. Let's add in a basic slider. Um, and then let's, here we have one, two, three slides. And now let's add in a link wrapper. And in that link wrapper, let's put... Um, an image or an icon and let's make it so the link wrapper and the link settings is a action link and controls the slider controls this slider clicking it goes to slide three and we could also make another one go to um, slide two and another go to slide one and let's uh, let's change the color of these links here, or they change the uh, change the icon. And let's go over to the front end. And there we go, controlling a slider with a link. So as you can imagine, you got a ton of possibilities with that. I'm sure we will do some tutorials on some of the cool effects you can create um, with that. Um, we also made some UI improvements. Um, we made the builder load fast. You've already seen that. Um, there is now in-builder preview support for hiding on a specific breakpoint. So if you go to, uh, for example, settings, hide on breakpoint, you want to hide on tablet landscape. Well, previously, it would just gray the element out. But if you want to actually see how your page looks with the element hidden, you'd have to go to the front end. Now you can just choose in-builder preview as hidden. Um, we also added 
Um, we improved the search, so it shows the full path to the control now. When you search, let's say you search for Z-index, it's showing you not just the control, but exactly where that control is, because sometimes there are two of the same control, right? Hover Z-index and normal Z-index in that example. We, uh, we made some other enhancements. I'm not going to show every single one of them in this video. You can double-click buttons now to edit the text for most buttons. So just double-click and edit the text, um, just like you can do for any other element on the page. Um, you can right-click in the structure panel now, just like the right-click menu you have on the site. You can also left-click on the, the hamburger icon to open that menu. We added developer APIs. So we have a developer GitHub now with a conditions API documentation. So if you want to add your own custom conditions to the conditions dialog, you can do that. Um, the conditions dialog is this thing that determines whether an element is shown or hidden dynamically. You can add your own conditions to this list now. Um, so we're excited to see what plugin developers do with that. We added a number of developer hooks for saving the post list element, shape dividers, fonts, and more. You can just go to the GitHub. There are some good code examples here. Um, the markdown files contain the list of hooks, and then if you want to actually see them in action, um, you can just take a look at the sample. You can even install the developer docs plugin, which will run all the samples on your site for you. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend doing that on a production site because uh, the examples do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, we are going to be adding a design library soon. We are going to be adding a pop-ups element soon. Uh, we are going to be adding... Um, a way to create builder elements for breakdance um, soon. We also fixed a number of things. Uh, we fixed issues with hosting compatibility. You can now open the builder in Safari. I don't want to just read down this whole list, so you can come to the blog post uh, on breakdance.com. You're just going to go down here when it's live, and you'll be able to read all of the fixes. Um, the backwards compatibility issues you will face when upgrading um, from the alpha to the beta are basically listed here. So we changed some elements around. We changed their options a little bit to make them better. So if you use the old options and then we deleted one of those options, um, that element obviously is not going to work exactly the same way. You will probably have to tweak the options a little bit to get it looking the same. This is a list of what we tweaked. Um, we also changed column layout options. So your columns, their responsive behavior it's not going to be exactly what you set in the um, in the alpha. Depending on how you set up your columns, the columns probably will just stack um, vertically as soon as you go to your first responsive breakpoint because we moved the stack vertically in 50% width and reverse order options. So you will have to reset these for your columns um, to get the responsive behavior to be the same as it was in alpha 1. If you hadn't set them, that's great. That means the behavior is going to be the same as it always was. But if you have set them, you will have to reset them. The way you can do that is just by going to Columns Layout, right-click, clear your old settings if you see a little dot, and then you can reset it up how you want. Um, all right, that is it for the beta one. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to your thoughts and feedback on the beta.